Laurel Murchison, guy from NC State, was a JUCO player, goes in the fifth round to the Tennessee Titans, I think the 29th pick of that round. When you look at him, uh, where do you think he stacks up and where guys were picked in this draft? Well, if you juxtapose him to guys that went early, first-round guys, Derek Brown was an amazing beast, uh, so he flew off the board early and rightfully so. Then we saw Javon Kinlaw go later in the first round. This guy's kind of a poor man's version when you look at his overall skill set. You know, he's, he's big, he's strong, he's athletic, but he doesn't have the ideal length, and I think that's kind of what slid him down a little bit when you look at his arm length. Those were some of the things that are in question, and that's what – ends up taking a guy who's projected to go higher and sometimes sliding him down the draft board. Yeah, I think length is the key, but we're going to look. Let's look at that speed and that the speed that he plays with in that athleticism. I love this here. He's there, and, and I think scheme versatility is important as well, right? He's playing a defensive end in a 3-4 right now, and look at the way he's able to run this play down from the backside. That's exactly right. Uh, scheme flexibility is huge with him because he has the ability to come off the edge and be quick in his first step as we saw him chase down that play. And then we have a chance to watch him. You talked about how he plays outside. Well, now let's slide him inside. And then you do that, and then he has a disruptive first step. He can blow by you, cross your face, and then sort of beat that reach block. And that's exactly what he demonstrates on this play. Yeah, I love this. And watch the way that he beats that. He beats the um... – the guard down inside, excuse me, beats the tackle inside as the guard tries to go get to the, sex, the second level. He's able to do that. And I think that's a really cool part of his game where you see that athleticism. And then here, this is one where we see them with that wide four-man front, right? He's really playing a defensive end here, even though he's playing at the tackle spot. But look at the athleticism to redirect, show that cha-cha, and then get to the football. Exactly right. And then get in the throwing lane, having the ability and the awareness and feel to know that that route's coming right behind it. He's also getting good depth. You know, he's going right before the sticks when he actually makes this pick. And so it tells me it's a guy that's very spatially aware of what's going on around him. And most importantly, he demonstrates his athleticism. I mean, he's moving around in here almost like a backer where he can get back and get in that throwing lane. That's the play really where he made some money because now if you're a defensive coordinator at the next level and you're Mike Vrabel, who's a, you know, a, a defensive minded coach, you're looking and you're saying, all right, this guy's a heck of a player, but we can do a lot with him. And I think that's what's going to be the key is that scheme versatility. I know we're going to get into this next tape of him showing some power, but before that, I want you kind of to tell people how hard it is for those defensive linemen to drop into coverage like that. Because usually, and I think you hit the nail on the head where you mentioned he's just moving and the spatial awareness. A lot of times you see defensive linemen miss that play because they're looking for landmarks. Exactly right, Michael. And, and oftentimes coaches don't even ask defensive linemen to do it because of that. They're like a fish out of water. But you can tell that this guy naturally has some good feel and awareness of being out and playing in space but also understanding how to get to depth in your drops and, and kind of to feel the routes unfolding behind you. And then lastly, you look at his, his eyes. He was able to read the quarterback. Quarterback's going to take you to the ball, and he gets right in the throwing lane. And so you look at it. Now you got a disruptive force. you a guy that can kind of give you what Jarrell Casey in his prime used to for the Tennessee Titans, and that's what they're hoping this guy can be. Again, he's not a flawless player, which is why he's there you know, on day three, but he is a guy with some upside. And if he can prove to be that penetrating force, I think that he can help this Titans ball club. All right, Seymour, we're going back in. And this one right here, I call this wrecking a game. And we saw this play earlier in the year when we did a tape, don't lie on Murchison. But now for Tennessee Titans fans just now watching this, uh, look, this is a game wrecking play where he basically tackles everybody. And he's able to get in and just kind of rock him back. The, the one thing about him is he has great upper body strength, probably more upper body strength than lower body. So here he's able to get down and right at the mesh point, kind of create some havoc. I mean, he just runs right through the back. You're going to try to block me with the back. That's disrespectful. I'll just knock him back, get out of my way. And then he's got a nose to kind of sniff out the ball. These are those electric type plays. You know, you mentioned sort of the energy that he plays with. Well, this is an energy play, and that's a big difference for his team. Yeah, and then this is a power play. And we saw him there playing a 3-4 defensive end again here, 4-3 defensive tackle. And look at the way that he gets low. That I know you love pad level, that low pad level. And he's able to take two guys and clog that up so they can't get this first down. 
you know, I, I, this is obviously short down, short distance here. And what I love is that he's able to hold the, po- the POA, the point of attack. And oftentimes what you want there is a guy that can just be like a big fire hydrant. And that's what he's going to be able to give you as he's able to use his strength to clog the lane. And so we've seen him as a 3-4 defensive end. We've seen him as a 4-3 defensive tackle. We now are watching him as a zero in a pass rush situation end of the half against North Carolina. And the thing I wanted to put on this is the effort you get from a zero. You don't see this often. And what I love about the tape here that you, in some of the plays you've selected, is we've shown now the two things that you can't coach, right? The spatially aware, being able to have a feel, but also effort. You're, you're mentioning the nose. I mean, this guy's in the center of the field here and watch the effort to not give up on the play. Now watch the, the how he finishes. He's trying to swipe the ball out. That's a subtle detail, but this is a guy that's playing with awareness, thinking on his feet. He's still trying to get the ball out as he runs there to try to give another opportunity to his offense. And so that tells me that this guy plays with a relentless motor, and that's what the defensive coordinators love about him. We can coach up the other things. We can work on your technique, but do you have those uncoachable skills that starts with effort, and that's what gave him uh, a chance in college, and it's also going to help him to propel in the NFL. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching him at the next level as a guy, like you mentioned, plays for a defensive head coach, and I think that's really important because those guys, they're not just pieces on a board. They want them to succeed, 